Hey guys, in case you didn't know, the US Navy has been developing an electromagnetic railgun for the past decade, and it's absolutely incredible. It's a highly futuristic weapon that seems straight out of science fiction. Using only electricity, it can accelerate a projectile to speeds of Mach 6. That's over 7,400 kilometers per hour. Plus, it has a range of over 160 kilometers. If you guys want more information on that railgun, check out the link in the description below. Anyway, World of Warships approached us and offered to sponsor a project based on their game. Naturally, we suggested building a small-scale version of the Navy's railgun. World of Warships is the perfect balance between action and strategic gameplay. Plus, if you use my link in the description below and are one of the first 300 viewers to use it, you'll get an awesome bonus which will give you a huge head start in the game. But, more on that later. In the meantime, let's start building a railgun. Alright, so before we build a railgun, let's talk about how a railgun actually works. You see, a railgun converts electrical power into kinetic energy by creating a magnetic field that can accelerate a projectile. Here's a diagram showing how that works. Now the factor that determines how powerful a railgun is, is how much current you can push through those rails. For more detailed explanation on how railguns work, I'd recommend checking out Electrogo Boom's video right here. So the question is, how do we build a power supply that can provide enough current to make a powerful railgun? Most of the time, we use lithium polymer batteries for our projects, and that's because they have some of the highest energy densities available in battery form. The problem is, they can't actually put out that much current. For that, you need a capacitor, which can discharge huge amounts of current in a really short amount of time. In fact, we've already had a lot of fun with these capacitors with Thor's hammer. How to place a capacitor inside of Thor's hammer, and it fits pretty good. <laughs> That's loud. <laughs> As you can see, it packs quite a punch. Now, one capacitor isn't enough. We're going to use 16. That's Holy big. Shit. Balls. That's hella. How heavy is this? Oh my god! <laughs> that is heft and a half. So you discharged it, right? Yes. I don't trust you. <laughs> that is beastly. Alright, alright. You one up me over the flamethrower. Uh, to start, you have to turn the pressure on low. We should probably go downstairs. <laughs> now crank it.
rest this in this charging circuit. Just plug it in and hope it doesn't explode. No, I think my fuse plugs. Which fuse? The tiny little tan amp there. Zero? Interesting. Doing there, bug. All right, so we are going to test how long it's going to take for this charger to charge up our battery bank. Capacitor bank. Capacitor bank. I'm just gonna grab some safety glasses. Oh, you need your hearing protection as well, because we're gonna have to discharge this thing after. Hooray! Uh, you're gonna need to not touch that with your hands. So this should be able to charge the power bank. We're going to see how long it's going to take. And we're going to double check that the step down works as well to make sure we can actually measure the voltage on the bank without blowing up every single multimeter we have, including this one. Okay, do you want a welding mask? Be sure. Okay, you ready? Right. Oh yeah, we shorted it. Now, that's a tenth of the voltage. So that's actually 40 volts right now. 50 volts, 60 volts, 70. Why, why are you wearing that drone fair shirt again? Because it's black and it matches the hacksmith. It's not black, that is gray. It's a lot better than blue. 313 volts. <laughs> be careful, stay back. Can I stop being the host and just be the camera guy? Volts, what? Can I stop being the host and just become this camera guy? It's so much more fun. Alright, we're at 380 volts. Okay. It does seem to be charging a little slower though. Oh <laughs> boy. Ah! James! I missed. We need a wood stick. Can we charge it up? It's probably like... It's at 370 volts. That's fine. Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> that was sweet. It's, it's probably still at 212 volts. It's still at 212 volts. Mmm. We're getting Alzheimer's. Atomized aluminum, great for the brain. So about two minutes to charge. Big spark. Success. Nice charging circuit. Now, I'm not a machinist by any means, and this is my first time using a CNC lathe, so let's just hit go and see what happens.
All right, so you might be wondering why we have a paintball gun attached to the rail gun, and that's because you do actually need to initially accelerate the projectile. Because if you just put this in between the rails and turn the capacitor bank on, it would literally weld itself shut. It needs to have a little speed at the beginning as it's entering the rails. So we've taken this uh, .5 caliber paintball gun, and we've turned the pressure down a little bit. As you can see, it's not very powerful. It is fast enough to make sure that this projectile doesn't weld itself in place. <laughs> G4. Hit. Nice. D4. No! You sunk my battleship! You'll pay! Safety. G5! Miss. What? I'd like to thank our sponsor, World of Warships. As you can imagine, this was a rather expensive build and we had to outsource quite a few components, which cost quite a bit of money. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the game. World of Warships is a huge multiplayer game with over 7 million players. You can command a massive naval fleet featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels, including the USS Indianapolis. Plus, unlock new ships as you prepare to dominate the oceans in World of Warships. The game is highly detailed, including changing weather effects which make each battle unique, and the tactics you use. With constant updates every week, this game is ever-evolving and, quite honestly, really amazing. Apparently, it takes the developers around six months to introduce a new vessel into the game. They take tons of resources like the blueprints and photographs and actually design the model from scratch. If you guys want to check out the game and support our channel in doing so, use my links in the description below. Plus, if you're one of the first 300 viewers to sign up, you'll get an awesome bonus of 250 doubloons, 1 million credits, the HMS Campbellton, and so much more. Now, let's test out our very own railgun. Come see this. 47, 49, 50, 50. A lot. What are we going up to? 150. 150, and then put that switch to... Yeah, put the guard in neutral. One fifty two, unbelievable. Come on, James, get some accuracy. We're going behind your ballistic shields that don't exist. Ready? No. Well, that was cool. It's not loaded, right? You're not gonna hit me? Cool. Ooh, that was incinerated. But it looked cool, and it broke the plate. So the Navy's railgun actually has a, um, a disposable casing around the shell. So it's actually got an artillery shell, and then a casing which would get all this damage to it that actually flies off of it and then propels the projectile forwards. Fine. It's fine. Yeah, give her. Yeah, before it blows up. Yep. <laughs> Success. Mmm. Toasty. <laughs> it doesn't work. Firepower. <laughs> this needs to be recharged. Dave the fireman. Alright. I was like, son up. The next Vic 
respect them. You know, I, I like to use technical terms. Right, 220. <laughs> Alright, that can't be good. 230 actually. Uh. Like it, it works pretty well last shot. Was that was the second shot higher voltage than the first shot? Yes. Yeah, yeah so it is work better with huh? higher voltage, yeah. It's working. It's doing the railgun thing. It's actually being a railgun. Yeah, try depressing the pin. Yeah, that's lucky. Yeah. Oh, it landed directly in the middle of the plate. Bon appetit. Sir, do you wanna watch this? It's gonna, it's gonna do the zappy thing again. It's gonna go wham. You're not gonna expect it, James, but I will. On sixty. 180. What are we going up to? 200? I don't know. What do you mean, what are we? You don't know. You know when to stop. Depends when Ian finishes the final camera. What? <laughs> Ian's not you. 240? This is time sensitive. 250? Sure. Ready? Stopping at 261. Shit. All the camera's ready? Is that one rolling? Um. Looks to be. Okay, ready? Where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm an awesome shot. Nice shot, James. There you go. Thank you. Now, where's the slope? That's sweet. King Henry VIII's first wife. So I just realized we haven't really explained what everything does on the railgun. So let's go through the system. First, we have the main power switch down here, on and off, and then we have a three position power switch up here. Plus we have a little voltmeter which tells us the charge of the capacitor bank. So when the switch is in the middle position, it's neutral, it's not doing anything, and it's ready to be fired. To charge it, simply push the switch forwards, and as you can see, the voltmeter starts uh, adding up. All right, so just for example, we're going to stop it right there at about 130 volts. Now, the reverse position actually engages the series of resistors on top, and this is to discharge the capacitor bank in case you don't want to fire it, because it's actually very dangerous considering it can go up to 400 volts and will put out thousands and thousands of amps, which is certainly enough to kill you. So, if you decide not to fire the gun, simply pull the switch back, and as you can see, the voltage drops off almost immediately as all the current is drained through these resistors. So with that being said, let's charge it up to the full 400 volts and see what happens. Two twenty, two thirty. <laughs> Woo! Ow, my ear. Yeah, I bet that really hurt, didn't it? What? Oh my God, it really has some ear protection. Matt, Matt. Did anyone see where that arced? I always wear PPE. Unlike us. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been a project that a lot of you guys have been asking for for a long time, so it's awesome to check it off that long bucket list of projects we wanted to complete. Now, you might be wondering, it didn't seem that powerful. And to be honest, that's because we did actually have to constrain 
uh, the design to limit the firepower of the railgun to make sure it fell into the classification of an air gun and not an actual firearm. And that's because in Canada we have strict gun control, which means we didn't want to make an illegal firearm, because making a video isn't worth going to jail over. Or is it? Or is it? No, no it's not. But if you guys want to see us take on more big projects like this, make sure you support our sponsors like this video sponsor, World of Warships. Check out the link in the description below for some awesome bonuses. Plus, if you guys want to own a part of this project, we're actually going to be auctioning off a few of the... Are we calling these bullets? We're going to be offering a few of these projectiles on eBay. Check out the link in the description below. Bids start at just $1. Thanks for watching.